Them be promise us, say we go get light and power. Nah, nah. Them hustle so they so they they can't get the power. Hmm. But now they know they do anything with the power. Sheer. Every day, dollar, just they get the higher power. Over naira. See them talk, say, make we off mind. But then go say, my ego don't come. So my people make you lie down. Oh, yeah, yeah. My ego don't come. Oh, yeah, yeah. My people make we shut down. Oh, yeah, yeah. They do even no one may person talk. Hmm. Them say that my egun, that man too they talk. He too they talk. Say my egun diary, he they hot like pepper. But every day, then they take money in box. Woman picking, they the street they hawk. See them talk, say, make we no talk. But thank God, say, my egun don't come. So my people make you laugh. Oh, yeah, yeah. My egun don't come. Oh, yeah, yeah. My people make you shout. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good evening to you, good morning to you, good afternoon to you from wherever you are watching from. This is Mayegun Live. Thank you so much for joining me. Share this broadcast. Invite your friends. Invite your not so friendly friends and tell them that Mayegun today, especially all of us in the diaspora, this is going to be interesting. Share it. Thank you. I you get it? Okay. If you don't get it, forget about it. You get it? Okay. If you don't get it, forget about it. You get it? Okay. If you don't get it, forget about it. Good evening to you, good morning to you, and good afternoon to you from wherever you are watching from. This is Mayegun Live. We are still covering their election palaver, the charade that has now popped up, Kolu President Kolu, I don't know how we are going to get used to that. However, the international disgrace have begun. Just two days ago, this newspaper, eh, an Austrian newspaper, in one of their publication, congratulating Nigerians, they described Kolu as a drug baron who just won an election in Africa's most 
I mean, Africa's uh, biggest economy, Nigeria. A drug baron multimillionaire. This guy, well, that one is a, is a joke in a way. But the Financial Times of London described Kalu as a wealthy kleptocratic godfather of politics who campaigned on the slogan, it's my turn, has been declared the winner of Nigeria's disputed uh, election. So the result means Africa, most populous country and largest economy has replaced Muhammadu Buhari, an ailing northern octogenarian Muslim with a reputation for financial propriety with an ailing southern septuagenarian Muslim with a reputation for lavish spending. That's how they described him. Eh? And also, uh, where is that one? Hang on. Oh. Yeah. Somebody picked this up. Said it's funny how people vote. This man barely knows if we are in match but has been elected president, uh, elected for president. How can there be a change? There's somebody from out there, right? I think there is another one. Uh, this particular one is a publication by a German newspaper as well, another German newspaper, translated into English. Tifnumbu thinks so too for decades. He has been accompanied by discussions about what is real about his uh, vital and what is not. He made various statements about his education. He claims to have laid foundation for the foundation for his wealth at tax auditing company, uh, Deloitte, which however denies having ever employed Tinumbu. In 1992, the US government charged him with laundering proceeds from the heroin trade in a court case, prompting him to settle and pay $460,000, that would be a problem elsewhere. Of course, it would be a problem elsewhere. If somebody who is running to be president of Nigeria is convicted of uh, heroin uh, uh, trade and he had to forfeit uh, this amount of money, it would be a problem. But in Nigeria, the entire political class is considered corrupt and criminal. Let me take that off. Yes, he said the entire political class is considered in Nigeria is considered corrupt and criminal. Now, this is not new for somebody who is a typical Nigerian. Like, I mean, Nigerians all over the world are stigmatized of uh, coming from the most corrupt country. We are considered to be, uh, uh, to have a criminal intent. Therefore, there be more such light on Nigerians abroad. Eh? That is uh, the reflection of the decisions of those who are back in Nigeria, if you get what I mean. Also, mm, when they talk about uh, character, the likes of Kolu has now given the Western world the easy, uh, what they call it, the easy a blackmailing tool. Let me tell you why. In Africa, neo-colonial, I mean, neo-colonialism is what we still have in Africa. Africa is independent. Oh, yeah, independence country. But they are still what? They are still tied to the aprons of uh, their colonial masters. And do you know why? Because the Western world don't give a damn about you except for whatever interest, their own interest in your country, which mostly is commercial. Do you get that? So to maintain this, eh, all they need is to give the backing as much as possible to the corrupt criminals who are going to hold public offices in Africa because the corrupt criminals in Africa are not different from their colonial partners too. 
the colonialists want to come and uh, extract whatever they can extract, and forcefully so, out of Africa for their own gains. Your criminal politicians also want to extract whatever they can extract, squeeze from you. But they don't even keep them in, uh, in Africa. They house all their loot elsewhere in the Western world. So when you have criminal, uh, or, or, or when you have uh, uh, politically exposed persons like uh, Tifnumbu, mm, uh, as the president of uh, Nigeria, what you have done is that you have given them a compromise, a compromised uh, person in charge of uh, the biggest economy in Africa. Now, through that, eh, including all those who are going to be his surrogates and friends, proxies and all of them, they will be under the watchful eyes of uh, the Western world. If looting you dry and keeping you poor, at least we maintain law and order, even if they have to shoot you on the streets. The Western world will press for something they call peace. They don't give a damn about your peace. Your criminal politicians are looting you, taking your loot outside the, for example, Nigeria. They are taking it outside, outside Nigeria. All these uh, looted funds are scattered all over the place in the Western world. So, if uh, the, the Westerners, eh, whenever they want anything in Nigeria, it doesn't matter how harmful or how kind of uh, disadvantageous it's going to be to you as Nigerians in Nigeria. Tifnumbu will need to walk around it and let them have their way. Now, you may not understand this, you know, in the, in the real sense of it, but I'll do my best to explain some certain, play, I mean, you know, kind of uh, present some uh, uh, scenarios that will make you understand what I'm saying. Compromise or your leaders, eh? Is what the world, Western world needs. Yeah? That means, do you remember there was a time, I think it was under Obasan Jo, I'm not too sure, when it said that, uh, you know, this uh, particular European country eh, dumped some toxic waste, I mean waste, in uh, Nigerian waters, or they are about to dump a certain amount of tons of uh, toxic uh, waste to dump them in uh, Nigeria water. How many of you remember that time? And if not because of uh, public outcry, the deal was already done. The toxic ship, the ship carrying the toxic, I mean, toxic waste already bashed in uh, Lagos, just never offloaded. In a comp I mean, when you have a compromised uh, people in government, such, th I mean, such uh, things eh, will be like common thing. They will look like eh, we are just trying to help them to save, I mean, you, you, because we are in partnership with this or that, yeah? That is what you are, what is, that's what you call a uh, compromise. Tif Numbu is a politically exposed person. And the Western media are already feasting on that. But the blowback, the blowback is going to be on, uh, on many, many of us who actually don't even live in Nigeria. Eh? Anyway, so that's part one of what we're going to discuss. Mm? I don't know. I think it's Canada plastic. You know, remember that story? I can't really put it together. Yeah? You remember? Good. Now, something like that. Something like, in, uh, for example, yeah? You know that uh, Niger Delta, where you have been hearing about uh, oil spillage, environmental degradation, eh? the destruction of uh, wildlife, sea life in the entire Niger Delta region due to gas uh, flaring. Dangerous people are living and they are breathing in dangerous air for decades now in Niger Delta of Nigeria. Do you know why your government uh, officials, they have no scruples, they have no political will eh, to clean the Niger Delta and at the same time, put strict, uh, what do you call it? Strict uh, laws to stop any tiny bit of flooding of gas. I'll tell you what happened. 
Because you see, when you have corrupt criminals in charge, okay, in Nigeria, Nigeria doesn't produce or do anything when it comes to the oil. Okay, the people who drill oil in Nigeria, eh, anywhere you see them drilling oil, yeah, the people drilling there, they are those who are like a subcontracted from those given the oil rigs. Okay, so they will bring their equipment, Shell, and the, you know, I, I don't even know if Shell is still there, but when you see all these uh, companies who bring their equipment, yeah. The contract is percentage as the percentage uh, uh, level. So what does that mean? You have oil here. Let us check how many amount of oil is there. Here you get. Once they do their measurement and satisfy that it is enough uh, for commercial quantity, so they will bid. Once they get the contract, the oil boats will drill the oil. Okay? They are also mostly the ones who are also going to help Nigeria sell the oil into the OPEC uh, market. Now, what Nigeria does is Nigeria just sits back after allocating the oil blocks. Eh? Nigeria just sit. The Nigeria politicians they just sit back. Remember, they are allocating the all these oil blocks. They allocate them to their friends, Abi, or their girlfriends, and all of that, Abi. So they sit back and wait for their cuts. Forty percent. It is called royalty. So whatever money Nigeria is sharing from crude oil is just a fraction of what Nigeria is actually, uh, you know, making from oil. Because Nigerian politicians never invested anything in your, in your oil uh, production in Nigeria. It's always been corruption, corruption, corruption. So because they didn't invest anything, those who are doing the job, they have no political will to tell them to stop doing the wrong thing. Here, abroad, eh, here in the UK, we have, uh, I think, is it Abadin? that we have oil here in uh, Scotland. If a single drop of oil, single crude oil drop, should drop on the floor of where they are, they are extracting crude oil in Scotland, eh? the company, eh? the company that is operating the place, they will pay multi-million pounds sterling in fine. Single oil, oh, but go to Niger Delta. People are swimming in crude oil inside their water. They are, they are, they are drinking crude oil from their water. But Nigerian politicians, they are what? They just walk straight into the host offices, get their, uh, get their Ghana must go, get whatever they want. And in this process, eh, because of long-term relationship and then the complete abandonment of the people, the environment and all that, eh, they just open shops. So the Oyimbos are now those who are running the business for them. So when they say this is the amount I want, we want you to say we made from oil. That's how much we are going to declare. The difference, eh? We are going to take this, you are going to take that. That's exactly how they have been running your uh, petroleum industry in Nigeria, your crude oil industry in Nigeria. So, whether those people are now doing anything wrong, oh, whether they are flaring your gas every day, oh, whether you wake up in Portacot one morning and the entire uh, sky, the entire sky is dark and black because of sooth, eh? You blow your nose. You are blowing black something from your nose. You look around. You say, what is our government doing? They can't do anything because they have been uh, compromised. And being compromised means if they should start doing the right thing. Eh? The Oyibos that are giving them the money they are making, the, they will stop. If they say, we are stopping tomorrow, we are no longer extracting any oil. Your politicians will go Cap in hand, they will be they will be prostrating for them to please come back, please, please come back, please don't do this for us, don't do this for us. But for you that are suffering and dying from unexplainable uh, diseases, cancer, and so many other neurological diseases that you are suffering from in that part of Nigeria, as long as it's giving them cool black gold money dollars, they will never raise their voice. So if they should start acting up, eh? All they have to do is all they, all they have to do is just to tell their the Oyibos have to tell their home country the places they have helped them put money. You see that particular one? He has one billion dollar in Deutsche Bank. That one we transfer this also money to a the particular company for him. We are the one who they are laundering money for your politicians. Now with the likes of Tifnumbu in charge, that is going to be the 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 normal thing of the day. So. 
if you are now looking for your government to, to fight for you, to stop gas flaring, to stop uh, oil spillages, to stop everything that has destroyed the environment, for example, in Niger Delta region, they won't have the scruple to fight it. You will continue to suffer that. That is what we call compromise. Hmm? If they want to attack your economy, your country, all they have to remind him of is that, uh, hey, mister, come here. We want you eh, to increase so, 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 so rate and all of that. Are you with me? Ah, but my people are going to suffer. That's austerity. We want you to do that. If you're not going to do that, yeah, well, you have to be on your own. So they, can, they will be threatening Tifnumbu and people around him. They will be threatening them eh, behind the scene with what they have stolen from you and the crimes they have committed. Imagine if a rumor comes and they say, America says they want to arrest Tifnumbu in America, your president. You'll be like, no, it's impossible. Then suddenly they say your president can't go to America. I'm just saying, you know, not like that's how it works. I'm just saying that's the level of embarrassment that you can actually face. Then you living in the diaspora, you have a lot of uh, questions to answer. A lot of people will be asking you, is it true? Is it true? Are you, I mean, is it true? Then you'll be the one to say, no, we didn't vote for him. He rigged the election. No. He says, so he reached this and that. So is it true? Is it, you know what I mean? That I hope you are ready for, okay? According to uh, Bokwari, is grateful to all of you. Thank you for electing me on two occasions to be our president. And thank you also for responding positively to my call by voting for our presidential candidate, Aswaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu. By the grace of God, Aswaju is now the president elect of our country. And as I mentioned before, he truly believes in Nigeria and is genuinely committed to the progress and sustainable future of the country. I believe Bola Tinubu will sustain our legacies and build on them towards achieving a greater Nigeria. <laughs> That's uh, Bukwari saying thank you to you. And uh, a lot of people have been now also saying congratulations to Kolu, but those who have called Kolu to say congratulations without having to come on social media, like diplomatically, that's how it's done, okay? I know a lot of you, especially the obedience, you are everywhere. You don't kind of give anybody any breathing space. The president, uh, the prime minister of uh, India, eh, Modi, prime minister Modi, congratulated the Tifnumbu on Twitter. I bet you, in that government house in India, in Delhi, eh, they will be discussing Nigerians and the way they responded to ordinary congratulations to president-elect. Prime minister of UK, Eh? Also congratulated the Kolu. Our relationship is strengthening. Is going to go on and the rest of that or more. The company like, said they won't eat the guy. Rushaki, I can't even remember his name. Nobody was giving them any. We didn't let him go. He's not our artist. You know, you know what I mean? They have already. You guys have already made uh, the. Uh, British uh, ambassador to Nigeria. What's her name? You have made that to lock her comment section for mistakenly saying, congratulations, Abby. The one that really moves me, that shook me, was when uh, Ukraine uh, Zelensky decided to say congratulations to Kolu Sunak Rushak. God bless you, Jari. Sunaki. We didn't elect him. I didn't vote for him. That's why I said on Twitter when he was uh, writing out those epistles and all that, I said, look at this one. This one, we say we don't even vote for. Eh? 
kan ye kan de endorse a criminal charade. But how would you understand when nobody even voted for the weary? Or when I saw one weary, one, one, one shiri, just miss road, enter the place. Hey, you want to bring this, your, yeah, 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 Nigeria politics, eh? You think you can talk to Prime Minister of UK, any as a Abulu Shidele? I actually didn't reply. I just, I just blocked the guy, you know, like, I told you there are ways you have to maintain, uh, uh, manage your own mental health these days, okay? Rishi Shiwiri, Lua everywhere. Sometimes don't waste your time trying to explain anything, okay? When he came there, he wanted to come and drop their usual slave, uh, their slavery mentality, so to say. You, this my ego, you think you can just, you think this is Nigeria, that you can just say anything to, you better be careful. Maybe they're not deport you, I say, they're not born soon like well. You don't know. You don't get such power. They're not born in father, born in papa, born in mama, born everything where you know. You know if you deport anybody, that's how, that's, that's how bereaved and mentally uh, sort of a destroyed Nigerian politician, politicians have destroyed you. They're not born in Papa Sunak. Show your Martini. Eh? You're going to say, you insulted me. Oh, yeah. Deport. Show Martini. Yala Jai. And not even in his dream. But that's not how it works. So why, why should I waste my time explaining to one uh, ombud slave? Eh? From Nigeria. God knows from where else. So everybody was like, oh, man, wait till they go on. No, oh, you get. Everywhere you see everybody just they collect. And you know me, I told you I'm the, I'm the greatest uh, troll. Uh, I'm the greatest uh, uh, troll when it comes to following people and following conversations and picking up, uh, you know, the points and the rest. I am, I am actually like a troll. I don't really reply. I don't tweet much. So, whatever. It's all about this election palaver, illegitimacy. So if they begin to look like you and say, yes, next, green passports, they look at you. They just say, press the button. This person is from Nigeria, sir. Oh, oh, excuse me, um, sir, Mr. Adewale. Mr. Dewali, uh, can you come this way, please? Please, come this way with your baggage, please. So, uh, why? To you, it's not new. Nobody said they don't get, they just they do harm. But some of you have not really experienced it. Maybe now this time you go experience some even more. So, why are they doing all of this? Uh, you are coming from a narco state. Narco state, Ibao, I am from Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. Our data shows that it's a narco state, so we are sorry. You get to some places, they will say, oh, excuse me, have you been to Nigeria? I mean, your, your, your travel itinerary shows that you've been to Nigeria three times in the last one year. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love to go back to Nigeria because you know what? I go back there uh, every like three, four times in a year. I've been doing like that for the past 20 years, man. Oh, okay, okay. But uh, in 2024, you have been to Nigeria three times. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I've, I mean, what, what, what is going on? What's wrong? I go to Nigeria four times, five times. I do that. Check my record. I do. Yeah, we do. We know. We know. We just want to know what you did when you went to that Nigeria this time. You know, like, what did you do? Ah, Egba Mike. What did I do? I went home. Uh -huh. I went home. Uh, we, did, uh, we went. Uh, why are you asking me all these questions? So no, it's because, you know, there, there's this a red flag. If you have multiple trips to Nigeria, we need to know why and all that. Except, you know, what? Ah, you are going to be experiencing that. You have no idea. When they say that uh, elections have consequences, apart from the other, you know, the sickness of Tifnumbu, the incoherence, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, let's see what they call that thing again, self. Eh? Amnesia, no, no, amnesia, dementia, eh, eh, that dementia. Uh, what else again? Uh, all of those that it can't really make a sentence, any meaningful sentence. Eh, you will live with that one, that's a different one. But you've been profiled, you are about to see it happen. I'm saying it, you should prepare. 
So when uh, somebody uh, stopped him and said, uh, uh, Kolu, as that's, uh, you know, president-elect uh, Kolu, let me see where he was uh, with uh, Boko Ari. Anyway, don't go anywhere. I'll, I'll bring uh, uh, you that statement uh, in a moment. Right. And Phoenix. Now, those are the ones who are still fighting over, uh, you know, going to court or not. But let me keep you kind of uh, busy for uh, uh, for a minute uh, with uh, the man that is going to be the next uh, the next story. She can join in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I found what I was looking for. So, yeah. Uh, after the whole uh, Bulaba, Balabulu, and the rest of that, okay? So, uh, Jide, who has been working for the past one year, uh, working as uh, Tifnumbu's, uh, you know, uh, house help, ensuring that everything is fine, is always behind him, especially the last uh, six months. But he actually abandoned them in Lagos, for Tifnumbu, so he was with him uh, just uh, last night. Uh, yeah, and somebody was like, uh, have you been hearing from the world leaders? Said, yeah, they have been calling me. And that's not how he said it. If he just said, if he actually said that, uh, yeah, I've received calls from, you know, congratulatory messages from this, from that, probably would be, it would be easy, Abby. Listen to him. Uh that was a good call on a message of best wishes from Macron, the president of uh, France. So uh, that's uh, what about your opponents? Okay, let's leave him alone. <laughs> 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 Mm -hmm. That was him. Eh? I told you that uh, this is what he wanted, Abby. You won't see much of him. It's going to be like a masquerade. And you will only be seeing the glimpse. Here you get. And that seems uh, to be the, the, the start of that. Anyway, they said, leave him alone. Leave him alone. Don't ask him too much, uh, too many questions. So, behind the scene, ladies and gentlemen, there are reports that Peter Obi has been under real pressure. Okay, some people feel like we shouldn't, we shouldn't use pressure, like he must do it, he must do something. No, 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 no. Or you can also call it pressure. It's not pressure like, uh, you know, must, must, must. But they achieved something that uh, the Western world didn't believe was possible. A lot of us here, too, still don't believe that it happened. Remember that uh, prior to the election, hmm, the tension in the country was so much that the reports that, this, that, that these uh, diplomats were receiving was that if by any error or neglect eh, they allowed 
DOB movement to run through the way it was running. And OB is declared the winner of the elections. There will be crisis. I don't know if any of you actually you are aware of this. I'll explain that to you. The tension towards the 2023 elections, the one that actually gave, the, gave uh, these diplomats uh, and all of them, right, a serious concern that they had to issue a security alert. So, I mean, uh, what have you to their own uh, people in Nigeria? They told them, don't travel to Nigeria. Okay? Not even after the elections. And if you are in Nigeria, leave. Some of you remember that. That was around uh, December, January. Remember? Because they knew that those who chose Muslim, Muslim ticket, ticket, they were prepared for war. A kind of war that uh, will snowball Nigeria into an endless chaos, especially when it is all about somebody that seems to be, uh, you know, coasting uh, to victory. They don't, want, don't, they don't want infidel. They made that clear. Malams are, I mean, what the, the clerics are coming now that they were paid 10, 10 million naira to ensure that uh, the Muslim Muslim ticket flies. I'll play you some of the videos. All right, when I have enough of them, I subtitle it for you to hear. Imam, a sheikh from Kano. So if all of that failed, it's just going to be the same plotted plan of uh, 2015 that if good luck, uh, Jonathan failed to give them that power, then the number of people that would have died, or maybe that would have been the end of the democracy, they were ready. Anyway, when the election was going on, they sent the observer, Sabi, to come and observe what was going on, good or bad, Abby. The observers started uh, making their report. They called it pre a preliminary report. And do you know what they said in there? Especially the EU. They said, this is not an election. It's fraught with uh, so many malpractices, violence, manipulations, distortion, and then uh, intimidation. You couldn't call this an election. But they called it temporary report. The day they released it, two of them did their media appearances here and there. Meanwhile, a few hours after that, they left Nigeria, except for the ambassadors who stayed back. So they now said since then, since the war is over, according to the this Westerners, eh? UK, America, and the rest of them, including China. Don't be surprised. They are involved in your elections too. But don't worry. People didn't protest. Oh my God. There is no riot. Ah, there is no fight. There are no, you know what I mean? That's shocking. Ah, okay, okay. Let's, let's leverage on it now. And maintain the fact that uh, anything that we, fa in fact, puts Nigeria under, remind you of why you wanted uh, to chop APC, Egbe live. You want to chop them. Like, if we get chance, I want, I, want, I want squeeze them. So if you continue in court, that means you are going to keep that energy alive. You are going to continue to mobilize and hope and believe. A lot of you believe that, uh, a lot of you know that uh, INEC has failed you. They duped you. They deceived you. You want, to, uh, you want to be angry. You want to react. You want to protest. But you are now realizing that, uh, no, it is different from when you were doing NSAS. You going out there to begin to disrupt the whole thing right now can, in fact, implicate your man and ruin his case. So you are being cautious too. They want that to be permanent. In a way that uh, you can forget everything and move on. And the only person that can make you do just that, according to them, is Peter Obi. Do you know who is leading the conversation? I beg go. You can go and verify you. Eh? Good luck, Egberi Jolantan. Immediately, this whole drama happened. The question that the Obi and obedience are asking is, if... It took you four days 
to collate the results to announce the winner of a presidential election. Eh? That means you have all of the results to come to the time that somebody has caught the highest tabby. But from uh, Saturday, 25th of uh, February to today, the 5th of uh, March, INEC is yet to upload the correct, I mean, sorry, to upload the, the full results from all of the polling units where election happened in Nigeria. Presidential election no? to this day. They are yet to upload the, the results. So, according to the OB, they said 20 senior advocates of Nigeria, sons, they were not hired though. They said they have already enlisted and volunteered eh, to help him prove his case in court. So, here is the problem. This is where the problem is now. The problem is that uh, even those who have no full-time, uh, what do you call it, no full-time uh, commissioning to go ahead and scientifically scrutinize INEX uh, uh, results that declared Tifnumbu winner. The only people who have done it on a partial level, they have discovered millions of uh, mixed up uh, votes, you know, all of you, you go down to this, you remember this very well. All of you who participated in the Trump and then the Biden election, eh? When uh, after the after Biden was declared, the Republicans were still finding votes uh, here, ballot paper there, numbers falsified, you know that stuff, right? I'm just using that as something you can, the scenario you can play in your head. That's exactly what that's exactly what, what is happening right now with the obedience. But the difference is this: people are doing this on their own. But Obi himself, eh? He is saying that he has the original results from his own original results. Eh, Tif Numbu didn't score twenty five percent as expected. Uh, twenty five percent in uh, twenty four states as expected by their law. One, number two, Tif Numbu didn't score eight million votes from their own coalition. PDP didn't score six point six uh, six point nine million votes from their own coalition. And in fact, EOB scored more than a. Uh, 10 million votes. Based, even despite all the rigging, despite everything that happened, though, they say they have that with them. Now, they are making a, sort of a two request. Declare me the winner of the person who scored the highest 25% of votes in 24 states in Nigeria. From their own calculation, Obio, he said he scored 25% in 28 states, as, as well as uh, the highest vote cast. And he has the evidence. So it's now up to the court to see all of that and still say they don't matter. Here you get. But true or false, yeah, real or not, the former presidents in Nigeria, some former uh, African presidents who are in Nigeria right now, the diplomacy, European Union, no, American uh, ambassador, and the rest of them, they are now trying to build what they call bridges. Remember I told you something about where before your Shari, I said they will rig you out. If you make too much noise that you are rigged out, they will form something called government of national unity. And it is a disguised way of saying, okay, let us legitimize, let, let us legitimize the whole uh, fraud. Okay, you bring some people. We'll give them appointment in the government. Uh, you, Atiku, bring some people. Let's work together. This is for Nigeria, Abi. Just let Sifnumbu be president. She, you are, she, is that okay? They did the same thing in uh, 1999. She, you get. When Obasanjo was rigged in. And the AD, Olufalaye, wanted to challenge him in court. Guess what? They wanted to challenge the numbers they gave to Obasanjo in the north. Obasanjo didn't want them to look into the number at all. So the elderlies, the state, uh, elder statesmen, they started moving mad. They started making... And that was how... Eh? Chief, uh, late Chief Bolaige became the Minister of Power. I mean, sorry, Minister of uh, Power. I think it was Minister of Power. Then he became Attorney General of uh, the Federation. And that was the position he held before he was killed. Ige belonged to AD. The people that uh, were the opposition to Obasan. So I told you, I said, when you get to that stage, they will just do blah, 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 for the sake of Nigeria, national unity. Sure you get. Now, with all of these proposals, eh? from a reliable source 
or many, many reliable sources. You know, politicians love to deny. They will first deny. Later, they will say, eh, okay, it happened. So, eh, uh eh, -huh, uh -huh. I said, but why did you deny before? From the reliable sources, good luck, Jonathan is the one who is now leading the charge, telling Obi that, uh, listen, you know what? From what uh, he believe, right? Obi still stand the chance eh, to still become president of Nigeria. But because of the tension in the country, that uh, their friends, when they say our friends, they are talking about uh, the, the Westerners, America, Europe, and the rest of them. Eh? Our friends need some level of trust of stability for the new guy coming in. Because with what we have seen, the tension is not over. It is only postponed. Because the obedience who have come to clean eye neck, if you know what they have done to the eye neck, eh? to the point that uh, every person who participated in, the, in rigging them, eh? they know their names, they know their families, they know their contacts, they know where they are working. Those who are working in different universities, obedient have fished them out. They are profiling them too. So all of this is like, they still strongly believe that their only hope right now is going to be the Supreme Court. With the evidence they have, in three months, eh, Obi can reclaim his mandate. And now, this is where the problem lies. Tifnumbu is not going to let go like that, which means he right now is asking that, oh yeah, help me beg them. I beg, tell them that say, I am sorry. Help me to go and beg them. So the begging there, which I called pressure earlier, is for Peter Obi. Please, you don't need to, you don't need to put the country through another stress where millions of your followers, millions of uh, the people that actually entrusted you, eh, they will be hoping and they will continue to push and fight. Continue to stroke, uh, what do you call it? The tension of uh, you stole our this and they will continue to make Tinumbu an illegitimate president. Anywhere he goes, they will just, you know, we, we, we look at this one. Like that disconnect, they believe that uh, Obi could please save them now instead of shifting it up to and then uh, completely destroy the legitimacy that if Numbu doesn't have. I, do you understand what I'm saying? I, by the way, eh, this is not a conspiracy theory now. Tif Numbu, generally, worldwide, is known to have uh, used his uh, stolen money okay, to steal an election. Now, you might say, well, while I see one year and the rest, oh, win now, win. Hashiwa is our president. No, 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 of course. It can be. But there are also what is called, uh, you know, uh, consequences of uh, uh, what you could say elections have consequences. Everybody will have the share of it, yeah? But nevertheless, eh, even Tifnumbu is worried. That's the point. I mean, if I if I if I win an election as a day so president of a country, oh my, I will be the superstar now everywhere you go to see me. So I ain't call me. You know, I got just a laugh like say, because ah, listen, what else is left? You voted for me. Abby, you wanted me. So what else, what else would I want to be kind of afraid of? The media. Bring the camera. Everybody, yeah, bring it. Let's, you know what I mean? But when you steal something, eh, you will need to, and everybody is asking you, what have you done? Ah, what did you do? Why did you do that? What have you done? Oh dear, why did you do that? Oh, what, you know what I mean? So it's always going to be like somebody is coming for you. Sure you get. So they are talking to, uh, they are talking to Obi. Meanwhile, you know where the problem lies, eh? The obedient way me are don't see you. They are already saying, they're no born and well, Mayego. <laughs> you bless you, you said the Christ, Mayego. They're no born and well. If you need money for court case, we go contribute. Which kind of nonsense you they talk, Mayego? Eh? That uh, she says it's not going to cut against because of one. 
about no they no they no they crack that kind joke oh let's say you don't even understand well people have said that to me to my face so the problem now is that uh, Kanobi tell them. Person will tell them, say, in the go court. And they were expecting him to say, we no go agree, we no go agree, oh. we no go agree, and everybody will just be like, I, see, I told you, I am actually like uh, one of the, one of the best troll on social media. I troll a lot of pages and to troll discussions and that's where i got uh, some of uh, how people are actually like uh, you know surviving this mad asylum called nigeria trust me it's a mad asylum the problem is that obi cannot even face them and say because some of them were like they were waiting for him to say no we need to fight for our this and that and then boom, that's it. Even if Nubu go don't run away from Nigeria right now, it go don't be bad. Suppose but there won't be no more election and all that. Now that's exactly what has been avoided. The tension that has been sort of a cement. The Western world wanted to remain so. If anybody tells you that the rest of the world are not worried about Nigeria elections. They are lying to you. You know what we are saying around there? UK, United Kingdom, uh, United States, uh, Germany, and the rest of the Western uh, Hemisphere that they call the Western Power. With what is going on between them and Russia and Ukraine, the effect that even me where they here they pay for eh? my electricity every month in this house and i use a lot of it used to be somewhere around there 70 pounds in a month today my electricity is somewhere around there 280 pounds in a month same electricity same bulb same house but because of the war line in uh, russia to ukraine my gas every month in this house, which used to be like, a, people say my house is like oven. My, you know, my eating is always, always almost on. It used to be 91 pounds or 92 pounds or in a month. Oh. Now I'm spending over 350 pounds every month just to heat my house. Because of what is going on in uh, Russia to Ukraine. Now we the so far i'm here too but i beg no compare because somehow somehow we have an economy here that can still kind of jiggy us jiggy us keep us and make us uh, still kind of uh, you know all right don't compare that with nigeria so they were worried if nigeria election should become bass boss boss bass 200 million people eh even the terrorists in Nigeria Republic, Chad, Mali, Cameroon, talk of this place, Libya. Terrorists that are that surrounded Nigeria, all those countries. By the time they see the refugee coming, now them go drop gun, run away, say, oh my, this one is bigger than us. That is if we were at 200 million. So they were worried. The spillover, eh? Do you know how far Syria is? Syria, CUK. Do you know how far it is? Eh? When the war in Syria, Nibato deep, when it became deeper, eh? you know what they call dinghy? This floating, uh, floating, what do they call it? Floating boat, uh, the floating uh, rubber that you put, you put on, uh, it's like a ramshack or something. You put that on the, on the, on the sea. Eh? From Syria to UK, one one shot, one let you mini UK Do you know how far it is? Now so refugee feel, feel, feel travel far, running away from war. If Nigeria election exploded, shall want the West now on Madini. You go see people we go trek go America. They will say, Baba, where are you coming from? Say, I'm from Nigeria. Since when did you leave? Since when the Wahala broke out? 
two years ago. Ah, how come? Why did you get to the border of Texas? It's a long story. It's a long story. Please save me. Do you get that? Because the whole world seems to just have been pretty much like a chess table like that. Nothing is far from any, you know, whatever, whatever happened from this side is going to extend to the other side in a way that uh, everybody will be uncomfortable. So they love the oppressors who can keep you tamed. Do you get that? They don't care about you. When you call them, when you tag them in anything going on in Nigeria, you are wasting your time. They don't give a damn. If the criminals in Nigeria can help tame you, stop you from becoming a bigger problem of theirs, they will back them, give them weapons and everything they need. Do you understand or not? Okay. Let's go to the other parts. Elections have consequences. I don't know what happened, but something happened. And that's something that happened was supposed to consume the entire establishment in Nigeria. It was meant to be something that no one has ever seen before. And I think it was meant to happen through disobedient uh, people. The establishment stopped it. Somebody said, no, 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 they only paused it. They can't stop it. Mm -mm. You have no idea how scared they were. How much they have to like walk and walk, triple walk to pull this rigging. Some of you don't know. If the time comes that they have to confess and tell you what they did, they will tell you that in this history of rigging elections in Nigeria, this is their toughest one. The one that every time they sleep and wake up, eh? somehow it seems that they still can't believe it happened. I'm talking about those who are supposed to be comfortably in comfort way eh, to win an election according to what legacy Bukwari said earlier. But this is the toughest rigging for them. I mean, I can put my money on that. However, it seems that the money couldn't buy them legitimacy. It was like a tsunami that swept through almost everywhere. Never seen before. People who are spending billions and billions and billions to buy people because they want to continue to impoverish the people. They lost to those who, are, who they have impoverished but who had no money to challenge them. Therefore, they couldn't challenge them by money. They lost to them. So one of them, really, they released one, the, one of their, what have you earlier, they said that... Um, uh, the uh, no structure for people tweeting in a room, social media noisemakers, despite all of the riggings, eh? They were able to present, uh, I mean, they couldn't take it away from them. Six senators elected, 34 House of Representatives elected. Imagine if they actually, if Nigeria was a country, these guys. Would have been no more, wouldn't they? But that's not how Nigeria works. So after the whole charade, including Yeye Belo, that ended up digging a gully, a dog gully, into about three, three roads that lead into a constituency of uh, his uh, opposition. When they asked him, he said, he decided to dig the road so as to prevent terrorists, full any terrorists from gaining access into the community. But we know that's not the reason why. Abi, El Rufaya of Kaduna told the people of Kaduna that uh, those who are trying to encourage the southern Kaduna, especially Christians in Kaduna, eh, to challenge him and his uh, own uh, authoritarian uh, rule or existence, the hell he created in uh, Kaduna, that they should think again because they can only try but you know what happened? They were more interested in the power at the center. They were rigging election for president. El Rufaya eh, lost 10 straight seats 
House of Representatives seat, 10, lost. The entire three senators coming from Kaduna lost them to PDP. As we speak, El Rufaya is yet to win a single election for APC or any member of APC in Kaduna, in Gombe. Mm? Same thing. In uh, Anambra, the Unzogu Zogu governor, solu, solution, Abi Solu Dump, Solu Dumbu himself, have also started the begging. Yeye Belu have started begging. El Rufaya have started begging. The one from Gobe is begging. Where the wiki is begging. Even some who is begging. And I'm like, hello, what's going on? You guys have the chance to rig whatever you want. You can do it. Has rigging become, I mean, has rigging become so tough and hard? Or they are just pretending to be nice? So that they won't really, all of you will not see them and say, I'm going to, I'll be back in a minute. Eh? Don't go anywhere. Thank <laughs> you. 